Hello everyone, my name is Iris Franz, which I'm in room. Today we're going to continue to talk about the strong axiom of reveal preference, also known as SARP. In particular, we're going to see whether there's a violation of SARP. Suppose we have a consumer and we have the consumption data of this consumer for three years. And in year one, this consumer purchased bundle one. In year two, the consumer purchased bundle two. And in year three, this consumer purchased bundle three. So we have three different bundles. And uh, notice that I use a color code. So in year one, the color is blue. Year two, the color is red. And year three, the color is purple. So we can calculate the cost of these three bundles in each and every year. So we can calculate the cost of bundle one in year one, the cost of bundle one in year two, and the cost of bundle one in year three, and so on and so forth. But you need to remember that the bundle we actually purchased were the bundles on the diagonal. So we purchased bundle one in year one, we purchased bundle two in year two, and we purchased bundle three in year three. All the other bundles were not purchased. And we can first take a look at uh, the data in year one. So we know in year one, we purchased bundle one. And we did not purchase bundle two, we did not purchase bundle three. But we can see that the cost of bundle two is $10, which is lower than 20, the bundle we actually purchased. So we know that, well, bundle two was affordable in year one, but you did not buy it. That tells me that you prefer bundle one to bundle two. And we say bundle one is directly revealed preferred to bundle two. And can we say anything about bundle three? No, we cannot because bundle three was not affordable in year one. And remember when something is not affordable, it doesn't say anything about your preference. So that's the only conclusion we have from year one. Bundle one is directly revealed preferred to bundle two. Now take a look at year two. So we know in year two, we purchased bundle two. At the same time, we see that bundle three was affordable, it's $15, that's less than $20. But we did not buy it. And therefore, I can come to a conclusion that bundle two is directly revealed preferred to bundle three. And in year two, can we say anything about the preference between bundle one and bundle two? No, we can't because bundle one was not affordable in year two. So by observing year two, I cannot say anything about whether you prefer bundle one to bundle two or bundle two to bundle one because bundle one was not affordable. And when something is not affordable, it doesn't tell me anything about your preference. Now let's move on to year three. Well, in year three, we purchased bundle three. And in year three, bundle two was not affordable. Bundle one was not affordable, so I can't say anything about your preference in year three about bundle three and bundle two or bundle three and bundle one because remember, when something is not affordable, you can't say anything about preference. And now since bundle one is directly revealed preferred to bundle two and bundle two is directly revealed preferred to bundle three, I can come to a conclusion that bundle one is indirectly revealed preferred to bundle three. And to see if there is a violation of SARP, I just need to see if bundle three is also reveal preferred to bundle one. If the answer is yes, then there will be a violation of SARP. And the reason why we put um, star in parentheses here is that I now know bundle one is indirectly reveal preferred to bundle three. I put a star here, meaning, hey, that's a bundle that I don't like. So I just need to see if bundle three is also reveal preferred to bundle one, whether directly or indirectly. And we can see from this data, hmm, no, we cannot really see that um, bundle three is preferred to bundle one. Because why? Because bundle one was not affordable and we end up not buying it. So there's no violation of SARP in the situation. So I hope this helps and I'll see you next time.